I don't make a video for two weeks and I gain subscribers? I don't get YouTube. Well, I've got a bit of time today. I'm still in the middle of finals, so it might be a bit of time for the next one. But today, I want to talk about Arsenal, who are leading the league again. They were last season, but last year, I never really took their title challenge that seriously. Even when they were nine points clear of City, I always felt like City would be able to leapfrog them, and they did. Now, it's not to say Arsenal isn't a good team heading in the right direction under Arteta, but... I mean, that was City. They won the treble last year. But this season, they're contending again. They're leading the league two points ahead of Liverpool and six points ahead of City, who they finally managed to beat this season. So are Arsenal legit title contenders this year? So let's look at what's different for Arsenal. I'm going to start with the midfield, where Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka have been replaced by Declan Rice and usually Kai Havertz in the midfield. Now, Declan Rice has been a game changer for this Arsenal team. He's elite defensively, maybe one of the best players in the world at breaking up counterattacks, always in the right spot, and he's even contributing a good bit going forward, getting into the box well. Now, it's not to say he's a perfect player. He is limited on the ball, or at the very least, it's taking a lot of time to adjust to Arteta's system, and that has forced Arsenal to change how they build up. But I can't say that isn't working. And then we've got Kai Havertz, the signing who everybody knew would end up working out eventually, right? I mean, he is finally getting back amongst the goals, his confidence might be up, and he is doing some good things, he's very strong in the air, he contributed a little bit defensively, I think now that he's finally playing in midfield, and not at striker Chelsea, they're starting to do a little bit better. Now that doesn't take away from his shortcomings, he does still have some issues that I'll get into later, but I think him getting his confidence back is a good thing. And both Kai Havertz and Declan Rice really help Arsenal out defensively. And let's get into their defense, because it has been superb this season. The best in the Premier League, maybe the best in all of Europe. And Arsenal's defense is talented. It isn't just a system helping the players play well. They're led by William Saliba, who might be the best center back in the entire Premier League. And that includes Ruben Diaz, who I have a ton of respect for. I mean, if Diaz has another two or three good seasons, I might put him in my all-time Premier League eleven over John Terry. And that's not just to get rid of another problematic player, though... Salah already helped me out with Ryan Giggs. Just a little bit more, Ruben. We're almost there. But Saliba is crucial to Arsenal. If you don't remember last season, he got injured, and that directly derailed Arsenal's title campaign, which honestly suggests they might have been good, legit title contenders last season as well. But I think with Arsenal's improved defense this season, even if Saliba does get injured, they'll be able to deal with it a lot better this season. I mean, obviously, they're going to hurt losing one of the best, if not the best, center backs in the league. But they're in a much better situation this year. I mean, his partner, Gabriel, very solid defender. He's got a great partnership with Saliba. Ben White on the right, great chemistry with Saka. And he's improved a ton going forward. He's always been good defensively. I think he's more of a center back naturally anyway. Zinchenko on the right, probably more of a midfielder naturally. But that's part of Arsenal's system. And he's not a terrible defender, but he's more on the team to help them out in possession, which I'll get into their system a bit more later. And if their goalkeeping can really get to another level, I mean, not to disrespect Raya or Ramsdale, but it's not at the level of other title contenders, certainly not the level of Ederson or Allison this year. But if they're able to really get it going, which is a big if, this really improves this Arsenal side. I want to make it clear how stifling this defense is, and I feel like I kind of have to after Luton put three past them, but that was set pieces and bad goalkeeping. This is an Arsenal side that, according to Football Reference, has 11.5 expected goals against them this season. That is by far the best in the Premier League. Their defense was good last season, but they've been upgraded to another level this season, and the numbers suggest that it will stay good throughout the year. Arsenal lead the Premier League in expected goal difference as well, ahead of even Man City and Newcastle, who are always at the top of this table. This suggests that it isn't a fluke that they're in first place, they are analytically the best team of the league, and we can see it on the field as well. I mean, they got a win against Man City this season. I mean, it wasn't the best game, but they were finally able to get over that hurdle, and mentally that could help them out a ton. I mean, the only times they've dropped points this season was against Tottenham, Fulham, that fluky game against Chelsea, maybe more bad goalkeeping, and that game against Newcastle, which they was their only loss on the season, which they actually protested due to Newcastle's goal. I mean, personally, I thought it was fine, but I'm not great at determining VAR rulings, which is something I have in common with English referees. 
but this suggests that Arsenal could just be legit title contenders. But there are some issues that we need to talk about. You might have noticed I've only been talking about the defense, and I've neglected the other area of the field. Arsenal's attack has declined from last year. They are still third in the goal scoring table, but when you look at expected goals, they're down in seventh, and that suggests that their goal scoring numbers might not be sustainable throughout the season. Now, typically, good teams are able to overperform their expected goals. Man City and Holland did this a lot last year. But Arsenal's striker is Gabriel Jesus. And while he does a lot of good things on the field, I mean, he won titles with Man City for a reason. Pressing, combining in the midfield, he does a lot of things right. But he's notorious for underperforming his expected goals. And with him leading the line, and Martinelli not being as prolific this season, still a great player, obviously, though, I think scoring might be an issue for Arsenal this year, and this is compounded by having a midfield that has issues progressing the ball up the field. Declan Rice, mentioned him earlier, elite defensively, one of the best, I, I guess I call them stoppers in the world to not sound pretentious, but he has issues on the ball, or at the very least is having a lot of time adjusting to Arteta's system. And then you have Kai Havertz next to him. Again, Regaining his confidence in front of goal, and every Arsenal player who I mentioned an issue with them, there's going to be positives. I mean, they're leading the league for a reason. But Kai Havertz is not the best in possession, especially in terms of his ball progression. It isn't at the level you'd like to have for a midfielder trying to compete for a title. However, the other midfielder is Martin Odegaard, who is world-class, and I do not use the word world-class lightly. The word, the words. Then you have Zinchenko, he really helps out in build-up as well, and Saka has been a big part of it too. I mentioned his chemistry with Ben White, Arsenal do a lot of their building on that right-hand side, and Saka has been a crucial part of it. But there are still issues in this Arsenal team, even if they can mitigate them. Goals might end up being a problem, the midfield might have issues progressing the ball forward. But that being said, they're still leading the league, and they still won a somewhat tough Champions League group, I mean, harder than Galatasaray and Copenhagen for sure. But there are holes in this Arsenal team. However, thankfully for them, every other Premier League team does have issues as well. Man City are in terrible form by their standards. Now, they are dealing with injuries, but I think the bigger issue is that the 3-2-4-1 formation may have been found out. Especially considering that game against Aston Villa where Aston Villa were able to just dominate Man City for long periods of the game. I think that the formation may have stopped working. Which is a shame, because it was so fun to see all these players at their best. Kevin De Bruyne, Rodri, and libero John Stones. Oh, there I go, being pretentious. But I think that the formation has to change. However, this is Man City. They will adjust, they will get better, and they're still my favorites for the title. Liverpool may have gotten back to their best, but I want to see them get through AFCON unscathed before I really put them in that title contenders tier. I mean, Salah is crucial to them, and he's going to be gone for a decent period. The Liverpool have typically adjusted pretty well to AFCON. Then you have a team like Aston Villa, who I feel like I have to talk about after that Man City game, but their away form is pretty bad, and I think that might keep them from being title contenders. Then you have Tottenham. They have been improved under Postacoglu for sure, but when you look at their underlying numbers... We should pump the brakes on them being title contenders. So are Arsenal legitimate title contenders? Well, yeah, they're leading the league deep into the season and have the league's best defense. They still have some issues on the ball that might come back to haunt them, but it is a good side. They've got a tough run of fixtures coming up against Villa, Brighton, and Liverpool, all in the congested December period. But if they're able to get out of that run with 7 or even 9 points, then I think the champions might be in trouble. So yeah, that's all I got to talk about. Want to talk about Arsenal. Haven't gotten to talk about them much, despite them being really strong. Liverpool's probably next up on the docket. If you've enjoyed this, I've talked about a lot of the other big teams other than Liverpool. You see some of those. And with that, uh, I think there's the MLS draft coming up, but I'm in finals, and the amount of film study I'd have to do on that to do it well, I don't think that's really possible. But if anybody really wants to see it, let me know. I mean, those videos do do well, though. I don't think it's the audience I want to attract at this point. But, yeah, thank you for watching. See ya.